hi guys welcome back to my channel i am here with a book review i'm gonna try to say this book review and just put it out there with no real editing um I'm, hopefully i remember everything about this book because i just finished it so it still should be fresh here but i read so many books that i don't want to get mixed up with characters so let's see how i do okay this book here is from by Mary Monroe, as you can see. I don't know if you're familiar with Mary Monroe book, but she writes really, really good books. Okay, I have read every last one of her books so far. Okay, so I believe this is one of her new books. And on the side of here, it says new. I don't know if it's just new, if you can see that. I don't know if it's just new to the library, but I had never seen this book. Okay, so let's get right into the story. Okay, this story takes place in Alabama, and it's around depression. Um, it's a couple that own a convenience store. Um, his name is Mac Fer Ferrison. Him and his wife own this um, convenience store. Um, he has one daughter, and her name is Joyce. Now, Joyce is 30 years old. She's never been married, never had kids. She's just pretty much a homebody, and she lives at home with her parents, 30 years old. Okay. But she's a school teacher. She's a very good person. You know, she don't get into any trouble or anything like that. But she just likes to stay at home. Now, her father, he likes to push Joyce, push Joyce off on different guys that he feel like fit for his daughter. But they older people. He's already in his mid-80s. So, he pushing Joyce off with guys maybe in their 50s and 60s, you know. But to him, they young. Anybody that's younger than 80 he feel like they young and it never works out with joy so she just gave up on relationships well one day um mr matt furry and ferguson ended up hiring a guy and his name was odell okay so odell come from a real bad background like he had you know the struggle of a you know a regular black man have growing up without nothing mother wasn't there because his mother died young so he had to grow up pretty fast he wasn't no bad guy but he had a different lifestyle than joyce because joyce family even though it was depression time they had a business you know they had a little convenience store that they sold everything from clothes to shoes to you know a lot of different things i guess you can go in and get and they was doing really good okay so odell stopped that miss mr mcpherson convenience store one day asked what they hired he hired him right on because he also had background of working in a firm so he was a big tall guy so it was a lot of things that you know they can use him in the store for and plus mr mcpherson was getting to that you know stage in his life where he really was looking forward to retire he didn't want to work till he was 90 years old so here is this young guy coming in that can really take over the store one day as far as taking you know care of everything but he still be the owner of course so he hired him on and then um in the book it says that odell was a real nice tall handsome guy so the first thing miss mcpherson thinking like whoa my daughter the same age as his so he asked odell do you have kids odell like no i don't have kids and he was like whoa check you know never been married no check you know everything was just sounding good to his ears for his daughter because he wanted to live to see his daughter get married and have kids okay so anyways he worked at the store for a couple weeks or so so he finally came to him and said hey i have a daughter that's single and i would like for you to meet her so he was like okay he was down for whatever so odell start asking the other employees like how she looking is she ugly? Why is she single? Is her parents doing so good. So he had one co-worker who gave, said a little joke like, she ugly, you know. <laughs> He's like, what? She ugly, you know. So he was like, oh, my goodness. He's like, I don't want to disappoint my boss if she that ugly. But anyways, they end up seeing each other. He liked what he saw. One thing led to another. Um... They, you know, he didn't like what he saw the first time he saw her. He was just like, oh, she ain't the best looking thing, but I can work with it. You know what I'm saying? He liked the body more than the face. So he wanted to 
take her out anyway. The please his boss, pretty much. So he took her out. They end up liking each other. He did end up really liking her for her, even though he was still like, if I saw her somewhere in the store, she wouldn't be the first person I go up to to try to get with, but I can work with her. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, first night, now this little, this, his daughter, she liked him though. His daughter was like, wow, you know, he's single and he in our town and he ain't nobody picked him up. So she was really feeling him more than he was feeling her. Okay. So, and she was kind of, she had a little bit self-esteem about herself because she kept questioning herself, you know, about why he liked me and he can have any woman in the world and, and you know what I'm saying? And, and I know I ain't the best looking person, but why he like me? Anyways, okay, trying to hear from get through this, y'all. So they end up going on a date or whatever. They slept with each other the first night. He had his own house. Um, he stayed in a little apartment, not in the best neighborhood. So he took her to his house and... They ended up taking her home. Then it turned into, they started doing a little more. She ended up getting pregnant. Okay. So, she was so surprised that she was pregnant. Because she wasn't really life experience out there like that. So, she was really kind of scared to go tell him. But he was okay with it. He wasn't mad about it or whatever. So, he was like, okay. He was like, I was... I'm happy. We just going to work it out or whatever. So now they have to tell her father she's pregnant and not even married. So they go and one day saw the father and the mother and his, her mother and told her mother. She, they, you know, they, they expected. So the mother, I mean, the mother was mad. Like what? You got my daughter knocked up, you know? And the father was like, well, you got him knocked up and, he don't got the best job. He working here for us and this and that, you know. So, anyways, they moved on from that. They they finally came to accepting the fact that she's pregnant. And then Odell, he was like, oh, I was planning on marrying her before she got pregnant. You know, and everybody was like, what? You was going to ask him? And she was like, yeah, yeah, I was going to ask him to marry her. But see, Odell... He really want to get into the family business anyway. This man come from nothing, and they got a little something, so he know they're going to die, you know, in a couple years from now. So he like, well, let me go ahead and marry her, and you know what I'm saying? We we, we can have this business, and it'll be ours, okay? So they end up having a real, real quick ceremony. They got married at, their parents house, at her parents' house, okay? So she's pregnant. Everything's going good, okay? So... This is where the story get interesting because Odell had to go on like a little business trip, okay? And it was a little different town over. Well, when Odell was on this little business trip, he was alone and he was in this little beat up truck that her father gave to him. So he went there or whatever and his plan was to go there and come back. He didn't have no, he wasn't going there for the wrong reason, but... He ended up getting into some trouble over there. Well, when he went over there, he stopped at a little restaurant to get something to eat. And he decided, hmm, I don't want to stand in this long line. Let me go to another restaurant. Well, he went to another restaurant not too far away from that. And he bumped into a young lady. The young lady looked about 17, 18 years old. Pretty and caught his eyes. And she was just like, woo, fine as she can be. Okay. So, him and this young lady end up talking. She told him about, hey, it's another restaurant down the street, and the line is not that long, and um, we can go and get the food, and we'll be in and out. So, Odell was like, oh, okay, you know. And she was like, but the thing is, you got to give me a ride. So, he, she jumps in the car with him. Odell knew, like, oh, what is I'm doing? Like, I really shouldn't be doing this. But he was just in a moment at the time. And he was just enjoying himself with a nice-looking young girl. Well, she gave him a ride. And then it turned into, oh, let's go to my house to eat the fish. Yeah. So, they end up going to her house to eat the fish. Well, when they got to her house eating the fish... After the fish was done, everybody full, feeling good. Then it jumped into, bam, let's have sex. 
okay? So he ended up going home late that day. Wife looking for him, father-in-law looking for him. He goes in the house, made up this big old lie that the truck got stuck in the mud and and it was some people after him and a, 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 a tree fell on him and bees attacked his neck. That's how he had all these red spots on his body. She fell for it. Family fell for it. So, since then, he got away with that one lie. He was saying to himself, like, wow, she stayed like a couple miles away. And I can be going back and forth. And my father stays in that same little town. So, I can use, I'm going to be going to see my father. So, his father, his father-in-law ended up giving Odell a position at the convenience store. He was like, well, you know, I don't want to be working here that long, so I want to make you the store manager. So he had a lot of control. He had the control of the money. He had the control of running the place. He knew the inventory, what was coming in, what was coming out. So he, and back then, um, I guess a lot of people didn't trust banks. So pretty much all the money they made, they took home with them, like in bags. And Mr. McPherson, he only had like a fifth grade education, him and his white boat. So he was really good in money, but he wasn't good enough to keep track of everything all at one time. He always needed help with certain things. So Odell was like, hey, I can control this. I can control that. He just had it all planned out, right? Okay, y'all. So he was going back and forth on weekends, and he was using an excuse that he was going to see his father. Okay, his father was older man, and his father lived with his stepmother, which he didn't care for his stepmother. And um, so he was going back and seeing, and the lady he was creeping with name was Betty Jean. Okay, so this young little young thing, Betty Jean, she knew that he was married. Okay, so they was up front with each other about that. So she was down for it. So they started creeping back and forth, back and forth. On weekends, he would tell his wife, oh, I'm going to see my father for the weekend. I'm going fishing up there. Or dad ain't doing too well, so I'm going to be up there for a while and this and that. So this turned into years, y'all. Years he was doing this. Okay? So, but before we jump the gun to those years, let's go back. Um... One day he came home from seeing Betty Jean. His wife was having a lot of pain. Start bleeding. She lost the baby. So after she lost the baby, around the same time she lost the baby, Betty Jean found out she was pregnant. Yes, y'all. She was pregnant the same time his wife was pregnant. So he was still you know, juggling boat, juggling boat. He was sad about his wife had a miscarriage, but he'll go and he'll be with Betty Jean, rubbing her stomach because he had still had a baby on the way. So his wife never got pregnant after that, you know. And by this time, y'all, years had passed. Betty Jean had three kids by this man, three kids. So three boys. So he loved his family, but he also loved Joyce, his wife, okay? And he still was controlling the business. He still was going, using this excuse that he was going to see his father on weekend. And Joyce never wanted to go with him. She used to always say, oh, Odell, you go, and you be safe. And he, you know, Odell say things like, well, you know, I'm going to stay with dad for the whole weekend. And then Sunday, I'm going to get up and go to church. He never wanted to go see his daddy, y'all. Okay, so that went on, like I said, for some years, for some years, for some years. This man was still doing this. One day, his wife had some new neighbors moved in. The new neighbors, I wrote down some notes so I won't forget their name. The new neighbors was Milton and Wyvon. Okay, they were some um, bootleggers, okay? They, back then, bootleggers meant like you... Uh, sell liquor out your home without you know the state knowing about it or whatever so it was like undercover money you was getting paid and plus they had a little bitty criminal records they had did but they say they changed their life okay so when odell used to go and 
you know, spend his time with Betty Jean, Joyce, since she really didn't have no friends and she just went to, you know, did her job and came home, she was more like a homebody, you know, even though they had their own place by this time. But she still was a homebody. She didn't never have friends. So she used to just stay at home and let Odell be gone for the whole weekend while she at home. So she was happy that Milton and Yvonne moved in next door. So she had somebody to keep her busy. And she really liked, you know, having a friend. But Yvonne was very pretty. She was real pretty. And all the guys wanted her. It's like... She couldn't go nowhere without the guys trying to stop and talk to her. She was just so pretty. And that made Joyce, you know, feel real insecure by herself because she wasn't getting as much attention as Yvonne was. She was already, feel, already feeling bad about herself. So she really was feeling like, why don't nobody like me, you know? I know I'm not the ugliest person. You know, talking to herself in that kind of way. And why Vaughn was really not a good friend of her because she would throw little, you know, slide jabs at her, you know, like, oh, what you earn? Oh, you earn that? Oh, you getting fat? Oh, this, you know, just. But Joyce was so naive. She used to just brush it off and like, what y'all be talking about, man? You know, stuff like that. But. Anyway, she was just happy to have friends, and she used to go over there. They'll make her some drinks and this and that, and she, you know, had a nice time when she was with them while Odell was gone, okay? So, I'm going to fast forward the story a little bit, y'all. Okay, so one day, Odell was at the shop, and he heard the door open. So, Milton, the neighbor that's bootlegging, that always pitching off of them, he comes in the shop. So he tells Odell, hey, don't you got something to tell me? So Odell like, no. So he was like, uh, yeah, you got something to tell me. He was like, no, I don't. So he was like, when you uptown, and he named the town, I don't remember the town name, but he named the town. He was like, yeah. So Odell really got nervous because he was like, ooh, do he know? So he was like, um, yeah, I seen you. And he was like, okay, I had gave the lady a ride, blah, blah, blah. He tried to lie, you know. And he was like, no, I heard all three of them kids call you daddy. So you got kids outside of your marriage. So he was like, oh, be quiet, be quiet. I don't want nobody hit Okay. So he, he ended up telling him, yeah, I got, I got a family, but I don't want Joyce to find out. He's like, okay, what do I owe you? Because he already knew Milton was about money. He was like, you know, selling things that he ain't had no business selling, making, un, you know, money on the table. So he was like, well, I want my rent paid for two months, and I want that pinstripe suit you selling in your store for free. Now, remind y'all, or I didn't mention, that... Um, Odell was taking care of his family well because he had control of the business money. And a lot of times what he would do is like they sold like uh, hog head cheese, pig feeds, all that deep, deep southern food. So he'll just, you know, box up a box of food and he'll take it to um, Betty Jean when he go on weekends. And then he sold kids clothes and women clothes. So his kids didn't have to run for none because he was get, he was stealing all the stuff from the family business, you know. But anyways, get back to what Milton said to him. And Milton had told him, yeah, yeah, I want two months of rent. Back then, rent was number $2. But it was a lot of money to them, okay? So he was like, okay, so I owe you, what, $4? And then he was like, and I want that pinstripe suit you had hanging up. So he gave him the suit, whatever. So he was like, okay, it's a deal, it's a deal, don't say nothing. You know, Dog and Well is not going to stay there once you start passing out money and they feel that they can use you and get more money. That's what they do. So it turned to Milton wanted a job. And he was like, well, I know Mr. Ferris is not going to hire you because he know that you bootlegger and you, you know, this that. He already knew Mr. Ferris and wasn't going to hire him. And plus, he did not want, Ms. want Milton at that store anyway because he know he probably would have been stealing so he was like, I gotta find a way to get out of this. So, anyways, he ended up telling Miss McPherson that Milton wanted a job. Milton so happened to pop up when Odell and him was talking about him getting a job. And Mr. McPherson told him straight up, no, 
he's not working in my store. You know what I'm saying? So Odell and Stott was like, yes, he won't be around me. Yes. So it didn't stop there. Milton started blackmailing him. Milton was like, how much you said you was going to pay me if I was higher at the store? He was like 30 cents an hour. And he was like, well, I want that 30 cents an hour. So they got into a little tussle because uh, Odell felt like he was trying to punk him. So they got into a little tussle, but he did agree to pay pay uh, Odell the money, okay? So, anywho, they had a they had a, a agreement that he was going to pay him, you know, the money, and everything was going to be cool, y'all. Everything was going to be cool. He was still raising his kids, and nobody found out. And guess what, y'all? He goes to see Betty Jean one day. Betty Jean was like, what's on your mind? You just seem different. And he was like, uh, I have a lot on my mind. He was like, what? So he had made up a quick lie and said, well, some young kid came in the store and tried to steal, and I roughed him up a little bit. And Betty Jean was like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry that happened. I can just imagine how upset that child parent is. So, so he was like, yeah, I hate it I did that to that young boy. But he had made up a lie. He really was worried about Milton taking all his money and that blackmail thing. But after that, that's where the story ended, y'all. And guess what? Let me show y'all. Y'all see this? To be continued. That's where the story ends, y'all. So have to wait until Mary Monroe rewrite the story. So that's why the book got like a bad rating. I, the book is not a bad book. The book is really good, y'all. And there's a lot of details in there. I didn't tell y'all. It's a really, really, really good book. But it's a big continue. So I have to wait, y'all. I have to wait. That's like a biggest tease you can do to a book reader, y'all. But it was a good read, and I read this book, and I enjoyed this book so much. I really did. It was really, really good. I hope y'all, if y'all like reading the books, I didn't tell y'all the whole story. I'm so sorry, but I had to tell y'all about the book. Y'all waited long enough, so I had to tell y'all. I didn't want to tease y'all that much. So, if y'all like reading the books, go out and get it. It's at the library. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.